So we're doing a brief, a brief, we're doing a beat breakdown today. Let's go through it. So Wrath is a song that came out. I think it was the second track that came out for this album, and it's featuring Sebra. She has a great voice. Really, it was really great to uh, work together with her and kind of push it out. Quite a big project. What did we reach? We reached fifty tracks. So decently sized set. So if you haven't heard it already, I'll just play like the main the main bits. <laughs> So the main kind of melody structure comes from this pad, which was originally played through a MIDI, which has quite a lot going on. That was put into a pad sound and resampled into this, which is quite nice. Very spacious, very ambient, a lot going on here. As you can see, I've got a lot of cuts and chops. Uh, again. Yeah, there we go. So it goes through a lot of different effects to create a lot of space. That's a good one as well. So it's just cutting off certain parts of the pad and repeating them and looping them. Um, great texture. And it, and it also, if we press A here, we can go into the automation. So this shows the, the variation in the sound, how it changes. So here we've got the midnight gain. So midnight kind of makes it sound like it's coming through a phone, mobile phone. So you can hear it's suddenly on a mo mobile phone that's been turned on here. And then it comes out of that mobile phone as a gradual uh, increase. So you can hear the phone turn on. And that's it sounding like it's coming through a speaker. And then it slowly gets pulled out and then brought back in. So you get that shape. Just to vary it alongside the glitching. So as we move through, we've got some chopping as well. This is cool. There was a vocal sample I got from Oversampled. I absolutely like chopped it to hell, as you can see. It's all sorts of different glitches from it. So, so this is in the right ear. Put headphones on if you don't, then it'll all sound the same. These are all different parts of that. Vocal mix getting chopped up, which is super cool um, to mess around with. And then you've got the left ear. Same again, but on the left. And then underneath, you've got width. So this has a high end and a low end that play it at the right and the left ear. So you've got a high pitch version of the chop. So that high end creates some space on the right, and then you've got the low end. Same again. Creating space on the left. And if you combine all, which is the glitch top, creates this really wide, but also choppy, glitchy vocals. Uh, sound. I don't know what you'd call it. And then you combine that with the pad and you get some nice spacey but glitchy vibes, which is again, I'm all for it. And that's the intro. So that plays through until we come in with a pre-kick and a bass. Vocals come in. So there's a bass. Uh, uh, you won't like my music. Um, he showed me the sub stomach in Ableton, and oh my god, it's just changed my entire perspective of bases. It's a really nice fat one. Oh, it's great. I, d I don't know why I like it so much. So as it comes through, you can hear it if you're wearing headphones, particularly or on a speaker. The bass kind of it separates from the center of your headphones out to the sides only by a little bit it only goes up to about 40 percent this is the plug-in wide is free it's very good um it just creates width very cool uh, songs need a lot of width to to help them not be boring i guess um watch it move there we go it generates just a little bit of width there um but like i said up to 40 percent, 39 percent. and then i've got some pre-kicks and stuff which is cool so are always important to add so that just like creates a little bit of tension before the kick hits so, there we go. very soft kick um focusing on the bass and the vocals we also have this at the top a uh, little strike on vital if i trap keys i can't remember which preset this is from uh, echo sounds luck i've added a bunch of um reverb to it Deborah's amazing vocals we need the preverbs, obviously. Kind of create that 
We've got the uh, ad libs, uh, which is nice. We we've blended all the vocals in. We've got the we've got the kicks, we've got the sub, whatever. So this is how that kind of like first verse comes into its structure. Which is said nice. And then you also come in with this little. So I love blending it through. Uh, it also creates a little ear candy. So you get like a little bit of variation. Snare comes in. And then we get the build up. Into the drop. So we're going to go through the drop now. So we have um, uh, the build up, which is actually the original synth. So the original saw. It was just reversed, so I, I played it with a bunch of reverb, which is why you can hear it suddenly increase in, in volume near the near the end there of that. So it gives you like, and then you're in to the drop. Now this was a really fun drop to make. Uh, again, we got the sub stomach, then add a bunch of distortion, increase the high end, widen it, all the sort, all the lovely stuff that you want. There we go, look at this. So this is the structure of it. We've got uh, the track volume, making sure it cuts out so you don't have like extended release that that, that messes with other stuff. Uh, and again, the, the width coming in every now and then just to create that space. You can see I've turned the volume off immediately as the snare comes in. With that cut off, it makes the snare come through louder. The drum set is pretty standard it's just a good kick cool kick punchy and it's a snare and a clap um, again oversampled uh, do some great sounds so it's worth checking them out and a clap with a glass smash at the end so that creates this texture uh, i love glass smashing sounds so some old songs that i did that got a lot of glass smashing in there some fallers um they're quite cool sounds lets that drop come in nicely So now for the main structure. So this is a super source set. So you record a saw. You can come to the sample here and change the envelope. Shifter, you want the actual clip itself. Transpose the clip so you can have it start at minus an entire octave lower. Come in, say, or be in. It's got to be on complex or complex pro. Yeah. yeah. So you get that noise. You can also have it come in from the high end as well, which is quite nice. So that's how you do that effect. And then I layered it with multiple different uh, octaves. Again, all panned to slightly different areas of the headphones. And then that's the rest. Again, you've got these tiny little whoop. So you can hear that pitch shift uh, happening in the middle. Can hear it happening there so but these are all just cut off and volume volume automations normal normal stuff like that uh, and then the final bit which was so much fun to kind of mess around with is the vocal chopping i actually got a pre-made vocal chop sample because sometimes i feel like they're the best ones to like re-engineer the vocal chop sounds like this really cool like bouncy jumpy sound so Obviously, I've got chop mid and chop by. So this, I actually have it saved here because I thought it was really interesting. So this is an oversampled loop. So this is what the original vocal chop sounded like. To make it go from that to this. My first favorite thing to do is reverse it because then you get a completely different set of notes. So there you go. Now it's sounding more familiar. And obviously you pitch it to the key. There we go. And then what you do, now I love doing this, again, this is a very common thing I do in a lot of tracks, is you can basically choose how the audio sample is played depending on whether it's warped or not. So obviously the beat is currently on preserve transients, which is these little arrows, there's transients that it hears within the audio. You can just set it to a specific uh, time signature, so, so or on every eighth beat, and that creates a bounce. Uh, however, you have to select 
this arrow. So this arrow basically determines if the sound has been stretched. How do you want the, that stretched audio to play? You can have it loop, so that's what this is. It plays it forwards and then backwards. Or you can have it played forward twice, so it would like double up on, on audio files. So essentially with this, two arrows, this will loop any transient that it hears. And let's say we have it do the backwards ones. So that plays it like back and forth. And then this one uh, with the with the arrow that hits uh, kind of a wall, it just plays the sample up until a point and then just stops it instead of looping it. With this vocal chop, it just reads off an eighth signature and then you put it to the wall and this is the amount of the sample that gets played, this, this value here. So you drop it to about half. And you basically got a fresh vocal sample. So you, you don't even, you can't even tell. Because you've pulled it from literally something completely different. My vocals in there, which is really cool. And then there isn't really much other, uh, other uh, there isn't much uh, change in the song now. You've got the old pad, which is the same as this pad, but just on a different um, instrument, just to vary it. Well, that was fun as well. So this this has a saturator on it. So you, I've increased the saturator and the drive, but then lower the output, so you get that distortion noise come through but it doesn't like come too loud so you get a you get a really cool effect or a drop that's that's basically it god nightcore do you remember that absolute classic